Hello everyone, Sonny here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a simple and improved slime farm for your Bedrock Edition worlds. This slime farm is pretty much as simple as it gets. It's also upgradable over time, so you can start off with just a couple of platforms if you want to, and then expand the farm as you get more resources. This slime farm produces 6200 slime balls per hour once it is fully completed, and overall it's just a super simple and straightforward design. It's also also optimized for a simulation distance of four, so it works on servers and realms and absolutely everywhere. And of course, that means that it also works on the higher simulation distances too. As another bonus of this farm, we are using snow golems to attract all of the slimes. That way you don't need to spend a ton of iron blocks creating iron golems. So again, the rates of this farm is about 6,200 slime balls per hour, which is an entire double chest plus all of these. That is a lot of slime. You probably don't even need that much slime, but you're gonna have that much slime if you build this farm. So how exactly does this slime farm work? Well, it's pretty standard and pretty straightforward. Basically, this right here, this 16 by 16 platform of blocks, is completely within a slime chunk. So slimes will spawn basically on all the layers going down, and then they immediately see the snow golems and jump straight off the platforms and onto our magma blocks down below. All of them basically die really, really quickly. The large ones split into smaller ones, and then even smaller ones, and then all of our drops are collected by a hopper minecart below the system. So as you can tell, it is a pretty straightforward slime farm. The AFK spot for this, however, is a little bit different than you might expect. We are actually AFKing over at the side of the farm. As you can see, I have my second account down there right now just to spawn some slimes for us while I'm actually taking a look at this thing. So if we go ahead and we turn on the spawning spheres texture pack, this will show us exactly where things can spawn in this area. So as you can see, a little bit of the area above your AFK spot will be spawnable, but you can just torch that if you feel like it, and then the entirety of the upper platforms are within the spawning sphere, and the entirety of the kill area is also within the spawning sphere as well. Overall, this is about as many platforms as you can really fit into this area without having guys despawning as they're jumping off the platforms. So it is pretty well optimized for a simulation distance of four. So what is up with these spawning platforms? As you can tell, they are 18 blocks wide and 16 long, and of course, chunks are only 16 by 16. Well, this is just a very small thing that we do to get a little bit extra rates out of the farm. As you might know, a Bedrock Edition spawns mobs on the northwest corner of a block, so basically like in between four blocks, which is a little bit weird, but that means that if a regular slime farm has walls directly on the edges, you're actually going to be losing that spawning attempt because of course a slime can't spawn partially inside of a wall. So in most slime farms, you're actually losing this entire row of spawning blocks on every single layer. But just by pushing out that wall a single block, we allow things to spawn right here on that corner. Even the large slimes can spawn perfectly unobstructed, and that helps us get a little bit better rates. Now, I did this on the right side as well because symmetry. That, that's the only reason. You, you don't need the extra blocks right here. You could have your wall there if you want to, because all the slimes are spawning like on that corner. But symmetry, darn it. So this is not the first version of this farm. I tested a lot of different things about this design to try and get better rates. And overall, this is the cheapest design while also maintaining very, very high rates. So you might be wondering if we can switch out the magma blocks for like campfires or soul campfires. And while you can do that, it doesn't actually have any tangible effects on the rates, like 3%. You might also be wondering about the scaffolding and water trick that you can do. While this does really, really help transport the baby slimes, it's about twice as fast as their regular walking speed, it doesn't really have that much of an effect for the medium slimes or for the large slimes. So ultimately, it's a lot of scaffolding and a lot of extra work, but it doesn't really help increase rates. As you can see, I tested this design here with the scaffolding water and with the soul campfires, and it was literally like 1.5 to 3% better rates. So the difference between 6200 
hundred and sixty three hundred slime balls per hour. And given how many campfires it is and how much scaffolding it is, it just really is not worth it in the long run. I also tested adding many, many, many more platforms and using upper slab platforms, but this actually decreased the rate significantly from 6,200 down to like 5,900, which doesn't really make any sense because there's more places for them to spawn and there's more platforms in total. What I'm showing you how to build in today's video is the best thing that I was able to come up with. I've tested all of these different designs extensively with a bunch of different iterations and today's one is basically the best that I have been able to come up with for this type of slime farm. So here's a bit of data for you comparing the effects of magma block and campfire killing methods to soul campfire killing methods. As you can see for the large and medium slimes, soul campfires kill them twice as fast. And here's some data for you comparing the effects of different platform types on the speed at which they transport slimes to the kill chamber. As you can tell, these scaffolding plus water platforms are much faster, especially for these small slimes, but again, it just doesn't have any actual effect on the rates of the farms. In theory, the scaffolding plus water and soul campfires should be significantly better, but again, it's debatable if it's even having any effect on rates at all. Real quick note about the slime farm. We we are using snow golems in this design, so you cannot build this farm in a hot biome. As you can see, snow golems die in the desert, in the mesa, and the savanna as well. So do not build the slime farm in any of those biomes. When in doubt, summon a snow golem before you build the farm. That way you know for sure they're not going to die. If you want to build this farm in a hot biome, you'll have to use iron golems, and that is just going to cost a lot of iron. And let's hop into the tutorial shall we for your convenience there's a full materials list down in the description of the video that way you know absolutely everything you need to build this farm before we actually do anything in game let me quickly show you how to actually find slime chunks in your world the absolute easiest way to find slime chunks is to simply go to a website called chunkbase.com which is linked down below and either click on their slime chunk finder or the seed map app and this will show you absolutely everything in your world we're going to scroll down and select the bedrock version Version. Of course, make sure you select the latest version. World Seed, it doesn't matter. Slime Chunks are the absolute same in every single world on Bedrock Edition. And then you can simply put in your coordinates down here at the bottom. So, for example, if you're standing at 100, 100, you'll see that there is several different Slime Chunks around you. And then you can hover over the square, get the coordinates in the lower left corner, and you know exactly where your Slime Chunk is. In the lower right-hand corner, it also gives you the corner of that chunk so you can go ahead and mark out that chunk in game and you know that that 16 by 16 area is a slime chunk so as you can see I've marked out the 16 by 16 area of our slime chunk in game and I've also marked out the 2 by 2 center of that slime chunk as well if you want to you can go ahead and double check that the borders are correct by turning on a chunk border resource pack and this will tell you exactly where the chunk borders are as you can see we're entirely within one chunk of this build and now it is time to decide the orientation of your farm basically just decide which sides you want to have snow golems on it doesn't matter it's going to be the same build process no matter which direction you build this in so i'm going to have snow golems on that side over there and on this side over here so that means that we need to dig out the entirety of the slime chunk itself plus three blocks on this side for the snow golems and the drop shoot plus three blocks on the opposite side again for snow golems and the drop shoot and then we need one one additional block on the left side of the build and one additional block on the right side of the build as well. So in total, your build area should be 18 blocks wide and 22 blocks long. So now that we have our area marked out, we need to dig down this hole all the way to Y level 11. So what you want to do for this is get yourself a good pickaxe. Don't start mining this with stone or iron tools. Get yourself a diamond pickaxe and maybe another right pickaxe. Definitely have efficiency five and maybe even get yourself a haste to beacon you don't want to spend like three days mining out this hole so just get yourself some good gear and you'll save so much time anyway this is about what it should look like once you have it mined all the way down to y level 11 so once you've mined down to about y level 39 that is when you should start seeing some slimes spawn in this area and as you can tell we definitely have quite a few slimes in this zone many 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 slimes it's worth noting that as you're digging out this hole you're likely going to 
find some caves and you'll just want to go ahead and explore those real quick and just light them up going about 40 blocks in every direction. So basically just torch spam them all and you'll also want to kind of fill in these walls as well. That way all these walls are nice and flat and this will prevent any slimes from landing where they shouldn't or you know basically escaping the farm, taking up the mob cap and reducing your rates. So in general just like light up everything fill in these walls, they should all be nice and flat. So now that we're down here at Y level 11, it is time to install our bottom most spawning platform. Technically, the floor of this area is the level of your spawning platform, so if you already got stone and stuff in place, you don't need to rip this up and replace it with nice blocks or anything. Slimes will spawn on stone just fine. For the purposes of the tutorial, I'm gonna fill this in with some nice, easy to count blocks. You can use really any form of solid block that you like for these spawning platforms. You do not need to use quartz blocks. Anyway, as you can see, this is the 16 by 16 square of our slime chunk. It should line up with the marking that you have above, and of course it should line up with your chunk border resource pack as well. You really want to make sure that this thing is actually lined up correctly, that way you don't build the whole farm off like by a block. So go to one of the corners of your 16 by 16 platform and count in by 8 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then just place in yourself a 2 by 2 of solid blocks that is different from the rest of your platform. That way you're just marking out the exact center. So that is the very center of your entire slime farm and that's going to help us line up our torch placement. So now we want to go to one of the corners, count over by 4, go in by 1 and place a torch and of course do that on all four sides as well so basically just get torches in all of those locations and now we want to go back to the center of the platform place in a torch on any of these corners go over until you're lined up with the other torches and then place in some like that that is going to prevent all mob spawning on that platform and to the left and to the right of the platform as well. So that is the first spawning platform completely done. We now need to replicate this but a couple of blocks higher. So you want yourself a three block gap between platforms and then basically build this exact same thing at the next layer up. And that is what the second layer will look like. As you can tell it is basically exactly the same as the original, just three blocks higher. Now that we know how to to build the platforms we're gonna go ahead and install some snow golems so go down to the bottom platform and line yourself up with the center two by two and go to one of the sides that has the three block gap we're gonna go ahead and mine out the eight blocks right here in the wall place the two lower slabs in these locations right here and then push in a minecart on one side we're now gonna go ahead and remove a couple of blocks and simply summon in ourselves a snow golem like so. Get that guy into the minecart and then just kind of line up the minecart on the middle of those two blocks. Place in two solid blocks right there, two trapdoors right there, and then fill in those solid blocks. We now want to remove some blocks to the left and to the right of that. Place in some trapdoors all the way around this guy, and then we want to place in a torch, one block gap between the torch and the trapdoor, and of course do that on both sides. We're going to go ahead and remove the rest of these blocks going all the way to the right and all the way to the left of the farm. That way the slimes can see the snow golem no matter where they're at in this area. Now, for the time being, because this is the lowest snow golem, we're going to go ahead and remove this layer of floor right here. That way, none of the guys jump up there and then can attack the snow golem from that ledge. So, just go ahead and remove all of these blocks on either side. Now that you have all these blocks removed, you want to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So, just repeat those steps and get another snow golem right there. In case it wasn't clear, how you spawn a snow golem is by placing two regular snow blocks and then a pumpkin carved pumpkin or jack-o-lantern on top of that and that'll summon you a snow golem and a real quick note for those of you building in hot biomes that want to use iron golems the cells are pretty much exactly the same so instead of having our lower slabs right here we're going to remove those and remove these six blocks as well we also need to remove these couple of blocks just so that we can fit in the iron blocks for the golem. Go ahead and summon in that guy and then fill in these extra blocks in the back corner. Put in yourself a torch on this iron golem, that way nothing spawns in there. And then also just put in those two blocks. And of course make sure that this entire area is completely clear, that way everything can see it. And as you can see, everything that spawns on this platform is going to see that iron golem. So that is both sides of the lowest part of the farm completely done. 
done, basically. We're going to be doing that exact same snow golem installation process for all of the different floors. So because we have two floors installed right now, go ahead and do the same thing for this platform. So you're going to be lining yourself up with the two center blocks of your platform, going all the way to the edge, removing these four blocks, and then placing in yourself two lower slabs right here. And then your regular blocks would be right there, one block above the platform. As you can see, it is one block above, and it's exactly the same installation process as the lower ones. It's really straightforward. And with that, we now have four snow golems installed for our two platforms. And if a slime spawns anywhere on this entire zone, they're gonna basically immediately see a snow golem walk towards it and then fall off of the platforms into your little trench so now we need to install the kill chamber which is a really easy thing we need to mine this area down by four additional blocks so it should be basically a three block deep trench and then we're gonna have the magma blocks right here at this layer and then we're gonna have a layer of rails below that so in total it needs to be a five block deep hole and now our trench is dug five blocks deep in total we're gonna go to the left side of this trench and put in ourselves three pieces of powered rail right there bring some normal rail all the way across the farm end off with two powered rail into this corner two more powered rail all the way back across the farm and then two going into the corner regular rail there going around the corner two more powered and then regular going all the way back across and to this end like so we're gonna cover up these three sections and put levers on top of all of those to power the rail on the other side and then do the same thing on this side as well and now we need to decide where we want our item collection to be you can either have it on the left side or you can have it be on the right side over here we're gonna choose to do it on the right side because I'm already standing right here so we're just gonna break into this wall like so and clear out a little bit of room for a minecart unloader so essentially off of this rail line you want two regular pieces of rail right there and then install yourself a double chest this can go into whatever kind of storage system you like the double chest is just temporary storage we're gonna place a hopper right here if a comparator reading from the hopper going into a solid block redstone torch above that block a solid block above the redstone torch and then a solid block right here and a piece of redstone dust that should light up and then whenever there's something in the hopper that should turn off as you can see there place in yourself one piece of powered rail and then place on yourself a hopper mine cart right there we can throw a few items onto the track and it should pick those up just fine and then it will drop off of those items into this chest via this mine cart unloader now as you can see sometimes it's going to be a little bit too fast what you can do to fix that is simply remove one of these power rails right here that way it comes in just a little bit slower and then it should stick to the landing basically and sometimes it's just a pain in the butt so if that configuration doesn't work for you what you need to do is remove your hopper minecart remove this rail that rail this block and then you move your hopper to the right by a block place in a solid block right there powered rail and then a regular rail hopper minecart unloaders on a bedrock edition are a little bit temperamental sometimes so sometimes you just need to fiddle with them a little bit but as you can see this hopper minecart has items in it and now it's actually going to land properly on the unloader and it drop off its items into the chest once it's fully empty it'll be set back on its way if neither of these two hopper minecart unloader designs work for you i have a whole tutorial of hopper minecart unloaders and you can check that out and try out some different designs furthermore if you want to turn off this minecart unloader all you need to do is place a lever on the block that the redstone torch is standing on and that'll turn it off and prevent your minecart from going back and forth all the time so now that you have your hopper minecart unloader installed we want to go ahead and seal up this little room and then fill in the rest of your magma block platform you should have magma blocks above absolutely every single piece of rail and that is your kill chamber completely done now we need to do the same exact thing on the opposite side as you can see this guy is just dying to die on some magma blocks Hey, guess what? This is actually a fully completed and functional slime farm. And if you want to, you can actually stop here because the farm is done. However, you mined out this giant hole. So you may as well fill the thing in with the rest of the spawning platforms. The more spawning platforms you have, the better your rates will be. Of course, make sure that you have some access points or like some ladders going down to your minecart unloaders. That way you can collect your items. But otherwise, the farm is done. However, if you want to continue onwards, 
let's talk about how you do that. So in total, you can have eight spawning platforms for this farm. As you can tell, we have the first two in and all the other spawning platforms are exactly the same as your second one right here. So they're always gonna be three blocks apart. As you can see, we have the blocks laid out for the next six and the very top spawning platform should be at Y at level 39 when you're standing on top of it. So go ahead and build six more of these platforms that look exactly the same as this one right here and then install these snow golems in the exact same manner as we have done previously with these blocks being one block above the actual spawning platform and ta-da we now have a total of eight spawning platforms in place and of course as you're building up these platforms the slime farm is going to be working and giving you a bunch of slime so chances are you're going to have more slime than you need by the time you even get done finishing the farm so now for the full eight layer farm we need to install the afk spot and the AFK spot is going to be off to the side of the farm as I've mentioned previously. Also, while we're here, feel free to remove all the markers that we have above ground. These are not necessary anymore. So ideally, both of your minecart unloaders will be on the same side of the farm. For instance, both of mine are on this side. So this is the side that I'm going to put my AFK spot on. That way I have easier access to those unloaders and to the storage of the farm. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the surface of the slime farm and line ourselves up with the center 2x2 two two of the farm as well. Pick a side, I'm gonna go ahead and line myself up at the right side of the farm. And now we're gonna turn directly around and count out 23 blocks in this direction. So this right here is block number one, and then just count out 23 blocks until you get to block number 23. And now we're gonna dig directly downwards from here, all the way to Y24. And this right here is the prime AFK spot of the entirety of the farm. You won't really be able to see the farm working from right here, but you'll see many, many, many slime balls be going into your storage system. One very important thing that you might need to do to improve the rates of your slime farm is to simply spawn proof other slime chunks in the area. So for example, if this chunk over here is a slime chunk, that is gonna be relatively close to your AFK spot and therefore slimes can spawn in the caves of this chunk. Now, slimes don't care about light level at all, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to find all of the caves in this chunk and lower slab them, that way no slimes spawn. Spawn proofing the slime chunks in the area can have a massive benefit to the rates of your slime farm because you're not going to have a bunch of other slimes in the area taking up the mob cap and preventing other ones from spawning. So make sure you check out the other slime chunks around your farm farm and go caving in them and slab those caves. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding today's tutorial, then of course let me know in the comment section down below. And of course if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, it helps out the video and the channel a ton. If you're new here, then consider subscribing and or maybe share around the video, that way other people can enjoy this farm too. Thanks again so much for watching, I'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one, and then there was silence.